Hello everybody. Uh, in previous videos we took a look at creating textures in Photoshop that we could apply to our 3D models in uh, 3D modeling and animation software such as Maya. Uh, one of the examples that we took a look at was this uh, texture that I created, this um, asphalt, uh, this broken cracked asphalt texture, uh, which I created simply by uh, photographing uh, some interesting asphalt uh, outside my home and then I went through the process of making it tileable in Photoshop meaning that we could repeat this texture over and over and over again and there will not be a recognizable scene. Another example that we took a look at was uh, this example of a leaf and in this case this leaf could be mapped onto a model in our 3D modeling animation software uh, and on top of that we could add additional channels not just the color channel to uh, our textures in this case I have an alpha channel which is being used for the transparency on a material and here in Maya, you can see my two textures applied to these two separate objects. A ground plane using my tileable asphalt texture and a leaf um, with my leaf texture, my leaf color texture, and my leaf transparency texture applied to it. Now, if I select my leaf, uh, you can see that in fact, uh, the geometry of it is uh, beyond just, let's say, the outline of the leaf, that in fact it's more of a uh, polygon plane that has uh, this, this texture mapped onto it uh, along with the transparency. And in fact, in Maya, we can open up what is called the UV editor, and you can see your texture and you can see what are called your UVs. This refers to, this refers to the mapping uh, on the object that allows the mesh to accept uh, these uh, 3D, sorry, it allows the uh, 3D forms or 3D uh, models to accept these two-dimensional images as textures which wrap around the three-dimensional form. Now, these uh, two examples that we're looking at now, uh, the leaf and my asphalt texture, are very simple. They don't really require any extensive UV mapping. Uh, so here's the leaf, and here is my asphalt texture, which, as I said, is uh, tileable. In fact, if I were to select this geometry here, duplicate it, and move it over, uh, you'll notice that it actually meets up seamlessly, the texture meets up seamlessly with itself, it wraps around, and then we can repeat this over and over again, and it should seamlessly repeat in actually multiple different axes, on two different axes in this case the X and the Z. As you can see, uh, this tiles without a visible scene. In fact, if I were to select one of these meshes, you'll see that the seam uh, is along here and along here. This is where the texture meets up. Uh, but if you use your uh, tools in Photoshop successfully, uh, you can eliminate those seams and then you've get, uh, you get this tileable texture here. Now the advantage of the tileable textures, of course, is that we can have a smaller texture uh, that can be applied to a larger surface. And this is really perfect in game engines and in Maya when you need to use 
these textures for uh, your environments, such as the ground. And as you saw uh, previously, I duplicated the geometry here to demonstrate how it's tileable. But in fact, in Maya, uh, we can tile the texture itself, uh, as you will see here. Now, you will notice with the tileable textures that recognizable patterns become apparent. Uh, for instance, you can see this uh, little cluster of leaves here, and it repeats here, and it repeats here, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, but there are no visible seams, and you can imagine that a player in an environment walking along will probably not notice uh, those kind of details, that uh, repeating pattern, unless they're looking very, very carefully. Now, oftentimes, the way that we apply these two-dimensional textures to three-dimensional forms is more complicated than the leaf or the ground texture that we just looked at. Uh, so, for example, we have this box here. Imagine that this is a cereal box, and we want to create a texture for it uh, to make it look like an attractive cereal box that when uh, somebody's walking down the cereal aisle in the supermarket, they're going to see it and they're going to want to buy it. How are we going to create a texture that wraps around this three-dimensional form? Well, in 3D, we do what is called UV mapping or unwrapping. And I've already gone through the process of creating the UV map for this box. And here it is here. Uh, what you'll notice here is uh, that we have what looks like an unfolded box here. And in fact, if I were to select the different parts on this box, like I select this face, you'll see that that aligns with this part of this uh, two-dimensional mapping of the box. If I select this face here, this will be the side of the box, the back of the box, another side of the box, the top of the box, and the bottom of the box. So if I have my three-dimensional model or form UV unwrapped, UV mapped in the 3D software, what I can do is export out a uh, two-dimensional image, such as uh, what we're looking at here, that I can then paint on in Photoshop uh, for applying as a texture in my 3D software. So you saw the box uh, previously that I modeled in Maya, and here we can see the equivalent. Once again, we have the front, the two sides of the box, the back of the box, the bottom of the box, and the top of the box. In fact, you can imagine that if we were to just fold this box, this edge would wrap around and meet with this edge here. Uh, and then this top would fold over to create the top of the box, and this uh, bottom would fold uh, to create the bottom of the box, and then we'd have our three-dimensional form. So let's go ahead and test this out. I will use the Type tool, and on the front of the box, we'll go ahead and write front, I'll duplicate, move it over to the back of the box, and uh, we'll type in back. Duplicate it again. This will be the top of our box.
the bottom of our box. And we have our two sides. Call this one the R side because if we're facing the box, this will be the right side of the box. And therefore, this one will be the left side of the box. And we'll go ahead and save this as a texture and test it out on the box model in Maya. So here we are back in Maya, and we'll go ahead and test out that texture that we just created. And here it is. And as you can see, we mapped it uh, appropriately. Uh, we have our front, our top, the bottom, the right side when we're facing the box, the left side when we're facing the box, and of course the back of the box. So what I'd like you to do for this assignment is to take this template here and create your own cereal box. Design your cereal box to be attractive, to be appealing, to uh, grab your viewers' attention. When they're walking down the cereal aisle in the supermarket and they see your box of cereal, they're going to want to buy it. Remember, the competition is fierce. You'll be competing against such favorites as Frosted Flakes, Lucky Charms, and Fruit Loops. I look forward to seeing what you come up with.